Good morning, YouTube. What's going on? It's Mesa back at it with some Destiny 2. All right, folks, we got a bunch of Warmind stuff to cover today. We're going to talk about the supposed rumor that Sleeper Simulant is coming back. I don't think it is because every single weapon I got to use in preview, if you want to check out my video on all the new weapons that you get from Escalation Protocol, they all kind of look like Sleeper Simulant in one way or another. We got some more information from the DestinyTheGame.com website. It updated with a whole bunch of new stuff for Regarding the DLC, including the name of the new raid lair. And guys, I got a feeling we're not going to get Prestige Argos. At this point, I don't I just can't see them putting it in the game. We're gonna have the DLC in two weeks and we're gonna have a brand new raid lair. So I'm speculating we're not going to have a prestige version of the current raid lair, which is Argos. And then I'm also going to go through the Crucible ranked play system. When I went to Bungie Studios last week, courtesy of Activision, we got some hands-on time with some crucible matches, some new maps, some new weapons. We did not get to record it, but we also were given the full breakdown on how ranked play is going to work, which I myself am really looking forward to. Ever since 1.1.4 hit, I really have been enjoying the Crucible, much more than I ever have within Destiny 2. And with the new ranked play system, which we're going to go through, it's going to cater to not only the MLG pros, but also casuals, average players like myself, and we can all get some rewards. Now, if you want to see a detailed guide on how the new endgame activity called Escalation Protocol works, and also a detailed review of all the weapons you can earn from it, as well as one of the famed weapons you'll be getting from Ranked Play, if you actually can make it all the way up to one of the highest ranks, uh, check out those videos, they'll be linked in the description and in the pinned comment. Without further ado, let's jump into this video. So from the DestinyTheGame.com website, we got some details on the story. So here's an overall explanation, and I'm just going to read this verbatim. Destiny 2 Expansion to Warmind continues your Guardian's journey with an all-new story. Anna Bray, a guardian long thought lost, searches for a connection to her past, one that could be lost forever on the polar ice caps of Mars. As Golden Age warsats begin slamming into the ice, the glaciers begin to thaw, revealing the core of the war mine Rasputin, and an ancient hive army bent on its destruction. Now free, the hive swarm in service of their god Zal, help Anna discover her past and destroy the hive's gargantuan worm god before it's too late. I gotta admit, when we arrived for the capture event and we loaded in and we saw the hive everywhere, I was like, wow, I, we all really thought this was going to involve SIVA and going to involve the Fallen. Nope, it's all these frozen hive that are causing shenanigans, as I always say, over on the icy caps of Mars. So, some other tidbits from the website. It says, continue your journey, explore Hellas Basin. That's going to be the destination. And when I got to look at the destination map, I was not able to record it, but I, could, I can tell you, it had two landing zones, and the developers told me it's about the size of the explorable area on Titan, not including story, strikes, and so forth. But it says, Explore Hellas Basin on Mars, which is the all-new destination, and we're going to get new story missions and adventures. Then it says the new enemy type, well, I guess they're renaming the hive, these frozen hive, the Grasp of Nacris. It says, these fanatical followers of Zal have been dormant in the frozen wastes of Mars for centuries. Now they claw their way to the surface, intent on conquering and consuming in the name of their god. Now, we all thought that Anna Bray was going to be the destination NPC, but in the Activision files that I have, which are a press kit, basically, of pictures, it shows for NPC three different folders. One, it says Anna Bray. One, it says Rasputin. And then one, it says Nacris. However, I think it's going to be Rasputin. Let me read you this here. And also, if you check out my previous guides on the uh, Escalation Protocol, you saw that I was picking up Mars tokens and also a new planetary material called Seraphite. But here it says, Vendor Location, a Bray Tech Futurescape. In the Golden Age, this Clovis Bray facility was a hub of exoscience and our civilization's outreach efforts. Its secrets have been buried since the collapse and are waiting to be found. So I get a feeling Rasputin is going to be our vendor for these Mars tokens that we actually cash in. On the next page, we learn a little bit more about Anna Bray. Famed hunter, Anna Bray, hasn't been seen since the Battle of Twilight Gap. Since then, she's been on a quest to discover who she was in her previous life and how that connects her to the war mind. So once again, I'm saying Rasputin's probably gonna be the destination vendor and probably Anna Bray's gonna be our leader on the quest or storyline that we follow. Then a little bit more on Rasputin, the most powerful military intelligence ever developed, was designed for independent thought and complex strategies to defend humanity during the golden age. Its motives and goals are currently unknown. Now it looks like we're getting two new strikes, however, we're getting three on PlayStation. 
Edition. One of them is called Will of the Thousands. Rasputin's neural network is under attack. Take the Valkyrie and use it to defeat a monstrous foe. If you want to know what the Valkyrie is, watch my video on how Escalation Protocol works. I show you how to use it, get it, charge it up. It's basically like a staff that goes really, really quickly. You run out of energy really fast. You could do a ground slam, and if you throw it, you can actually hold down the trigger, charge up that throw, and the longer you charge it for, the more damage you will do when you throw it. The other strike is called Strange Terrain. Descend deep into the tunnels under Hellas Basin and take the fight to the Herald of Zal. Stop this hive prince before he can funnel more power to the worm god. Now here are some images of the PlayStation strike and you could clearly see this is not on the icy caps of Mars. This is on Nessus and it looks like we're taking on some Cabal and we're taking on some Vex but it looks like we're trying to rescue someone so not 100% sure if this will even tie into the uh, Warmind storyline, or perhaps because it's only on PlayStation, maybe it's like some remnants of the Red Legion, or I don't know, we'll have to find out when we actually play Warmind on May 8th. Now, the new raid lair is going to be called Spire of Stars, and I got a feeling it's just going to be like the first raid lair where we go into the Leviathan, we go into the Belly, and it's probably going to involve the Hive, or these Frozen Hive, so to speak. And I'm calling it right now, guys, I don't think we're getting Prestige Argos. It's too late. Uh, I get a feeling we're just going to get this new raid lair and probably a prestige version of this new raid lair, which is called Spire of Stars. Now let's talk about ranked play. So I was able to see it, preview it, go through all the menus, but I couldn't record it. So let's just go through the basics of it. So first off, we have two different types of ranked play. There's Valor and then there's Glory. So each one of them, Valor and Glory, they have levels. You start off as Guardian, then you go to Brave, Heroic, Fabled, Mythic, and then the final one is Legend. Now when you get to the end, when you become Legend, you can actually reset yourself back and then there will be some sort of special emblem, I believe, that will show that you actually reset and you want to go for whether you're in Valor or Glory and go all the way up to Legend again. Actually track the amount of times you've made it to Legend. I know a lot of PvP pros are probably going to be doing that. They want to show off that emblem to say, hey, I went Legend 8 million times or something. So Valor is going to be more for folks like myself who are average, bad aims McGillicuddy, average at PvP. That's my old nickname I used to call myself in D1. Anyway, we have Valor, which is going to be when you complete a match and you win, you go up and you get points. If you lose, you get less points, but you still go up. Glory, that's going to be for the competitive folks. When you win, you go up in points. When you lose, you're going to go down. Now, if you want to earn points for Valor, you can get them from any playlist, from the Quick Play playlist, from the Competitive playlist. But when it comes to Glory, the only way you can earn points, or lose them for that matter, because remember, Glory, if you win, you go up in points. If you lose, you go down. Glory, you can only earn or lose points in the competitive playlist. Now, when it comes to points, Valor is going to cap out at 2,000 rank points, and Glory is going to cap out at 5,500 points. Now, every time you go up a rank, whether it's from Guardian to Brave to Heroic to Fabled to Mythic to Legend, you're going to get some rewards. You're going to get some Engram, some tokens, and actually, they said, we're going to get some masterwork cores. So as I mentioned before, if you reach that 2,000 rank points in Valor and you become Legend, you can then reset that and technically prestige like COD. Same thing with Glory, if you cap out at 5,500 rank points in Glory, you could reset it back and you'll get some sort of special emblem and track the number of times you've quote unquote prestiged. Now when I was playing this last week at Bungie, you have streaks, there's a little ticker that's uh, below your emblem, and that ticker shows a streak of five. So you actually get a little bit of a bonus in terms of points if you get a win streak, but you also get a loss bonus or a loss in points if you lose five matches in a row. So the goal is to try to win. Now, there's going to be a number of other extra rewards as you progress through these things. Some exotic cosmetic items, but also the one that everyone's talking about, and I did a review of this weapon, is the Claymore. The Claymore is this beast pulse rifle where it's got Outlaw and Desperado. This is going to be achieved from the glory ranked play. And if you actually can get this thing and you make it all the way to Legend and you have this weapon, you can get the Legend ornament for this particular weapon. So everyone's going to be trying to grind for this thing and you can only get it in Season 3. Once Season 3 is over, we're not going to see this weapon again. Now let's finish this video off with talking about if the Sleeper Simulant is coming back. So here's an image on screen that made it to Reddit. I believe this came from the PlayStation Store. Look at the Guardian on the left, not the one on the right. I think the Titan on the right... The main weapon that that Guardian is holding, that looks like what Anna Bray was holding. I got a feeling that's going to be like a story or a quest reward. But 
Look at the Guardian on the left. So clearly, that looks like a power weapon, right? We see the little blue light coming out of it. Uh, more than likely, that's a linear fusion rifle. And if we look at a reference picture, which was also posted in this Reddit thread, yeah, okay, that looks like sleeper stimulant. But guys, everything I used, uh, the submachine guns, the shotgun. When I was using the shotgun, that thing looked like sleeper stimulant. All the weapons that you can get from, well, I'm sorry, not all. A lot of the weapons that you will be getting and earning with Warmind, especially with Escalation Protocol, they all kind of have that Sleeper Simulant look. They have the Rasputin look, and that's what Sleeper Simulant was all about. So I'm going to call, no, I got a feeling that's just a regular legendary linear fusion rifle, and uh, that's not Sleeper Simulant. I don't know. Could be totally wrong. Everyone's speculating that it is it. I personally don't think it is because there was a number of weapons that I got to preview at Bungie last week, and I could tell you they all kind of look like Sleeper Simulant. So believe me, look, I want Sleeper Simulant to come back. I love that thing, but I got a feeling I'm calling it right now, and we'll see if I'm wrong. You know what? I hope I'm wrong. That's just another linear fusion rifle that has the whole Rasputin look and vibe to it. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'll link the high res image to that thing in the description. I'm in babble mode, which means leave me a hashtag made it to the end and thank you so much for the support guys the stream yesterday was outstanding so many new sponsors you guys are really helping keep this channel alive and uh that's it guys so do me a favor drop a like in this video only if you see fit follow me on the twitter at mesa sean check out my stream usually and always on youtube and that's it i'm out of here like vladimir